We are here tonight to dedicate the new lighting system, the permanent lighting system, for the Statue of Liberty, which has been donated by Musco Lighting. And this is uh, a big moment for us because we are replacing a temporary system that was also installed by Musco Lighting right after Hurricane Sandy. Um, the new system using LED technology is 62% more energy efficient, uh, less polluting of the night sky, and yet more intense on the statue itself. So I would say that Musco Lighting is Lady Liberty's new best friend. The Statue of Liberty has never really been dark, even from the very beginning. In 1886, when the statue was dedicated, there was an electric lighting system here. It wasn't very effective, uh, and it was turned off and then reactivated again for a little while. It wasn't until 1916 that the floodlight system was installed, and the new lighting came in as technology changed. The lighting that was here prior to Hurricane Sandy dated from 1986, which is when the Statue of Liberty was restored by the Statue of Liberty Ellis Island Foundation. Most of that lighting was located in lighting wells on the grounds of the monument. Hurricane Sandy hit on October 29, 2012 inundated the island, didn't reach as far as Fort Wood, which is what the Statue of Liberty and the pedestal of the Statue of Liberty stand on, um, but did destroy all of our docks, uh, the perimeter walkway, our utility infrastructure, and of course the lighting system. So the Statue of Liberty went dark after Hurricane Sandy. Very shortly after that, Musco Lighting, having heard about the Statue of Liberty going dark, came to Liberty Island and helped us by installing a temporary system. That's the system that's been in place since the storm, and that's the system that we're replacing today with the permanent system, also donated by Musco Lighting. The first feeling that I have is I'm so proud to be part of this team that's able to do such amazing things. I mean, I got the phone call about the possibility of lighting the Statue of Liberty after, the, after Sandy came through. Uh, but it was the team that made it happen. Uh, we tried to put a flight together that following day on Sunday and things didn't quite work out. Uh, we ended up coming out Monday morning, uh, met with the park service uh, late that morning and afternoon and by mid-afternoon we had already phoned back to our engineers and started working on some designs for cross arms and fixtures for the, the temporary system. Uh, flew back that evening and continued working with our designers and, our, and the manufacturing crew to get the cross arms and fixtures manufactured. Uh, they were manufactured by Wednesday afternoon, loaded on a truck, and they were on the, on the road back out here. Then a crew of about nine of us flew out on that fr following Friday morning and uh, got the temporary lights positioned in place. We brought our own generators to be able to illuminate the system or energize the system because the pretty much the whole island was without power. By Friday evening at sunset we were we turned on the temporary system and that system's been in place uh, and operational since that point in time. We receive about four million visitors every year uh, and and certainly most of that visitation is during the day uh, but Lady Liberty is viewed by everyone who is out in the harbor uh, on an evening cruise, someone on the Staten Island Ferry, uh, someone living over in Brooklyn, someone living over in Jersey. Uh, so she's, she's looked at by millions of people here in the metropolitan area all the time and visitors who come from all over the world who might come here in the evening may not get over to the statue but they look at her from Battery Park. Uh, so to have that beacon in the harbor is just an enormous symbol uh, for people all over the world. Similar to some of the other monuments that we've done, uh, we were able to find a, uh, a 3D model of the statue online. And so we were able to download that 3D model into our lighting design software and basically sit at a computer for all practical purposes and, and aim lights onto the statue. And that allowed us to predict where the, where the light was going to hit, what kind of shadowing we were going to create, what kind of modeling we would create, you know, what effects really made it made certain things, uh, features of the statue stand out better than others. The equipment we've got out here, both like say the temporary system as well as the permanent system, is state-of-the-art LED lighting technology. Very narrow beam, uh, so we're able to control the light and get it onto the the statue much more efficiently than 
uh, previous systems were. Just kind of the one of the nice features about LED, it affords you the, the opportunity to, to become much more efficient and create a lot better effects. Uh, we were able to cut the energy consumption by 62%. At the same time of cutting the energy consumption, we also doubled the light level on the, on the statue. So it'll be much more visible from Manhattan and all the surrounding areas, uh, much nicer appearance. And in addition to that, uh, we've selected an LED with a color temperature that for the statue really makes the, the patina color stand out much better than it has in the past, much better than you could, you could do with metal halide. And in addition, it gives a very nice contrast and makes the torch, the yellow torch, stand out much better. Yeah, the torch is illuminated with uh, 16 fixtures that uh, go around a, a kind of a catwalk uh, at the at the base of the the torch itself, and they're they're pointed pretty much straight up towards the torch. Some of them tilted back a little bit. It just depends on the the uh, curvature of the torch and where where the flame is going. Um, and so that was obviously the getting up there for the in, installation crew was was quite a quite a challenge getting all the equipment up there, um, but then getting up there to, to aim the lights in is is uh, no small feat either. It's a it's a bit of a climb to get up there. It's been a really great opportunity for our team to get involved in working with the National Park Service in developing good lighting practices for the parks but also setting examples for the nation uh, as to how things like that should be done. One of the things obviously that we're very interested in is rendering the parks like the Lady Liberty uh, so that people can really focus on and appreciate the, uh, what, the, what the park stands for. But um, also very importantly is the fact that we're able to demonstrate energy savings that can be made, how the, dark, how the night skies can be darkened so that people can enjoy the beauty of the, of the monuments and at the same time be able to see the beauty of the dark skies. The Statue of Liberty is a huge symbol, uh, not just to the people of America, but I, mean, I would say to the people of America, but, but, but certainly the people in the New York metropolitan area. You know, as you might imagine, the region went through uh, quite a time and in many ways is still recovering from the effects of Hurricane Sandy. So it was uh, really a huge symbolic thing to have the statue relit so soon after the hurricane hit. I've been involved in a lot of these and I can't say that anyone's more special than the other but uh, they've all been a blast but you know this one obviously just the notoriety of it, the, the significance of what it stands for, um, it just kind of makes you really I guess be in awe of what the, the project that you've had the opportunity to be involved in. And then of course there's just huge pride in being an American and being able to have an impact on something that's, you grow up just being in awe of the fact that it exists and then to realize that you get a chance to be involved in rendering it uh, for Americans and the world to see. Uh, this has got to be one of the most symbolic statues in the world. The millions of people around the world that have strive to get here to America, the symbol right here is, that's what they dream of.